Okay. So they switched it from their middle to their left forward like this. Okay. And then Lennon was actually pinched in here. Right. So first of all, there was a switch for there and Lennon had no even thought of going to win that ball. Right. We looked like this in the back. We had four, you know, compact players. Right. But nobody winning the ball. Right. So they played here. And and then for some reason, he decided not to go out players and he played it back. Right. So they played yeah. it back some here, played it back over here. And, you know, in this case, Saba was like here. Right. This is Silva now, but it doesn't matter. Right. So then they played it here. OK. And now instead of Wiley coming to address it. So first of all, Wiley could have been and we yeah, were arguing we about were, this on we Twitter. Were, he was jogging back and and literally like jogging back as that that was recycling over. Yeah. And so could have seen the guy that was out on the touchline. I don't need you know, we were arguing about this on Twitter. And what I didn't mean was I don't want Wiley like this. Right. Right. But what I want is like Wiley right here, like, OK, go for it. Right. I dare you with my speed. You try to play this ball and woo, right. right there, close enough where he can close right. it down and not close enough where this guy can easily get behind him somewhere in there. Now, you notice there's a distance. There's a gap here. Right. There's a gap between the center back and Wiley. Right. But it doesn't matter because there's no forward there. Right. And in the, on that play, there was literally no forward. There was a kind of forward here, whatever. Anyway, so instead of that, he stayed, Wiley stays in here. They play out wide. Right. And he drills the ball all the way to here. By the time he does that, Wiley is here. This guy actually makes an, I think, an overlap and ends up here. Right. The center back is here, which was a Brahm in that case. Right. Cobb was back. Lennon was, of course, yeah. pinched in. And two other players are back, too. Yeah. And we actually had Muyamba and Sleaze were yeah. back. Yeah. No, they were this way. Sorry. This is the way they were. It was like six, six V three there. Okay. And Almada was here. But they expected this. This is Saba, right? Now it's obviously Silva in this particular case, but it was Saba on that play to do this. Okay. So when we win the ball. Right. So obviously the other winger is going to be here, but let's move as they were. They're not going to be, you know, the other team is going to be, you know, yeah, somewhere. We're outnumbered. Here, right. So. Like this. Okay. So when we win the ball here, and actually I think they were kind of, it was sort of like here. Right. Um, when we win the ball here, right? So much of soccer, the key to playing offensive soccer, right? Is when the ball turns over that first pass, does it lead to somebody in space running with the ball? The space right here is right there. That's exactly where Saba in that case just abandoned, right? He abandoned that space to check all the way back mm -hmm. out here. Yeah. What he should be doing is here and tires legs out too in the meantime like yeah. unnecessary running right. unnecessary running from the guy that you want to save those jets for wiley in this case could be out here the center back could be out here we still have cover with here and we can have you know this guy coming over right with Miyamba. you know we're still fine there right now if we turn the ball over he tries to dribble against their center back and Miyamba gets a tackle in oh that's what we need, right? One of the things that we're not getting is we're not getting a huge amount of wing play. And that's because not only is he expecting the winger to be the one covering out wide. So he's expecting this. He's also letting his pin steer. He's expecting this, right? So we end up with Sleaz and Miyumba here. Right. And then usually yeah. we have two options. And often Sleaze and Moyamba at this point in the buildup are just, they're marking no one. Yeah. Right. Well, and a lot of times they're ball side and there's, and we'll get to this in a second because that's the other point I want to make. Yeah. But we end up something like this. Right. And so the problem is when we win the ball, let's say we win the ball here, where do we have to go to? 
We only ever yeah. have Almada or Gigi. And that's what we're doing is we're playing Gigi and expecting him to hold it up while we all get running up, right? And it's because our outside wingers, which we're playing, we're playing a front three. But our front three are expected to cover in outside of our yeah. outside backs. That is creating a huge problem because we're giving him a wide open player and we're not marking him, which yeah. is nuts. And it's creating a huge problem because when the ball turns over, we have nowhere to go yeah. with it. And we have two very athletic fullbacks. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if they, if they, you know, if they save their legs on that side of the field and then you let Saba and Silva sa save their legs for that side, that's better balance. And again, it's not like we're saying the fullbacks have to be way out on the touchline. They have to be up closer. And now if the, now if the game is compact on that side, yeah, maybe they do need to be up on up right on top of them. If the rest of the team is shifted over, like on that last one we broke down with, with Lennon, where it kind of started it off, like there's no harm in that to be right on top and tugging his shirt. Really? Um, you got the rest of your team there. Yeah. Um, so again, when there's a huge transition that we just saw happen and you just leave acres of space. If that's not a soft goal recipe, I don't know what is. Yeah. And I'm going to go back for just a second because I want to show you the other problem that I think that is really hurting us. Okay. So let's put our forwards up again where they should be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's put, Sleeves and Yumba for a minute here, and Omada and Gigi were somewhere here. Yep. So they actually broke us down somehow. There was like a give and go to here, whatever. And our, actually, these guys were even further up. So then our back four was literally like, as we just pointed out, was like this one, two, three, four. They were super pinched in. And um, this guy was wide open. So anyway, so they switch it over here. Okay. So first of all, which point in the game is this, by the way? This is just the play that we uh, just watched, just, okay. the beginning of it, all right. right? So they switch it over here. So first of all, right? Not only does the pinching and kill us because, as you saw, they're expecting the guy to come back. And in the first game against Chicago, it was the same thing. Lennon kept dropping back, and he allowed Saba to chase all the way yeah. back here. It was crazy. So that is clearly the tactic on both sides. Okay? Anyway, so they allowed this switch over the top, right? 30 yards, right? So, and there was nobody on, him, right? So that was an outlet. That gave him out. So Please, let's just say we'll go with a better tactic. So if Lennon was actually responsible for that player and he was a little bit over there and Wiley was a little bit over there and we looked even somewhat normal. So first of all, you now no longer have this because if you try to play that ball, Lennon has a really good chance of intercepting. Right. right? So that's the first thing. And right. If, and if not, yeah, he's going to recycle it back and there's more pressure to be right. Placed. Maybe he brings it down under a lot of pressure, but he has to play it back. Fine. Okay. The second thing that we're doing is, which I don't really like. So I don't know what you think, but I'll ask you the question right now. What have you thought of me? Yumba over the beginning, the first third of the season? Well, like in that Cincinnati game, I thought he was great with sleaze. I thought there was good balance. Um, overall, I think, Moyamba is, you know, he puts pressure on the other team. Uh, I don't have a problem with with what he's doing based on what I think he's being told to do. Yeah, him and Sleaze are playing really well together tactically, and it's giving us a midfield or whatever. Yeah. But I don't know if you notice, Moyamba's not winning the ball. It's all Sleaze. Really? Right? Sleaze is basically okay. winning the ball. Now, Moyamba's helping because he's, he's part of that. Yeah. But the thing is, and Miyumba looks like, in my opinion, every game he's getting more and more dejected and he's playing worse and worse. I and that's what I was gonna get to. I definitely see he I feel like he's been great all through the beginning of the season and particularly the last couple games, as as yeah. the team starts to falter, like you can see him, he got super frustrated on that one where I guess he made the bad little 
touch back and they ended up scoring on us in this last game. Yeah, we're going to play that in a minute because that we're going to show you the consequence of it. Yeah, and, you, play and, and you can see how frustrated he is. And I think, again, we talk about body language. Yep. He has not shown that body language to a teammate. We're going to show that season. right after this because we're going to show you why. Okay? Yeah. So first of all, why is because – so right now they're playing this dreaded double pivot and they're really, really disciplined about it, which is, you know, good. But the problem with that is that that's not Muyumba's game. Muyumba yeah. has two things that he does well. He runs around a lot and he's really good on the ball, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He's not good, really great at reading the game. He's not so good tactically. Yeah. They have put him like in a box. But he's a full on athlete. He's yes, physical. Yes. He can he, cover a ton of Like room. you said, he's very skillful on the ball. So he gets it yes. and moves it quickly to somebody else. So um, I feel like Pineda has not seen his strengths and has put him sort of in his own little prison. Yeah. Right. So what I've been advocating is Sleaze doesn't need that. He can cover their best option no matter what. Why don't we play with Muyumba and Almada a little bit ahead? Okay. Like this. So first of all, where they had the ball. So now Sleaze can go ball side every time. So this guy had the ball sort of more in here. So Sleaze can go ball side, which in this case is right here. Right. Um, and he's taking away this pass here. If you notice here now, and let's make Wiley even in better position, where do they have to go with the ball? Probably to the keeper. Yes. So I'm, I'm even also going to advocate the near side center back, which in this case is Gregerson, but it's been a Brom, should be really up on his guy. And Cobb should be a little bit central and a little bit back so Cobb is covering this sort of deep ball in behind him and now you know the reason why you play two center backs I don't know if you know why do you think why do you think you play two center backs because most teams are playing only one center forward so why do we need two against one well I, I mean everybody playing two center backs right why do you tell? Well, I say I thought it's a trick question. What's yeah, I know. It's not to... a trick question. I think you absolutely need two center backs because you need the cover. You need pressure cover, right? Mm -hmm. But it does you no good unless one of them is actually pressuring and going for the ball. If you have two here and they only have one forward, the guy who's on the ball side should be really aggressive trying to win the right. ball, right? And what we have is a Brom doing this. Backing up. Right, and we kind of look like this. So and then, even, and then the young kids, you're putting him in a predicament because you got Abraham <laughs> just backing up. Yeah. So I would say, look, get up the field, get challenging or whatever, get a little bit of cover in behind, and now we can win the ball up the field. You've got all action, Miyumba, who's going to go put pressure on things. Even Almada can be cheeky and come double team. Right. We could sometimes look like this. And then, like right? you said, if you get Moyamba out of his prison, he can play those little ticky tack balls off Almada. Yes, Almada can. would love that. Like, get you know, of course, you want to run everything through Almada, but Moyamba is more than happy. Like that's his game to use his athleticism, get the ball, pass the ball, get the ball, pass yeah. the ball. I mean, Doug Roberson sort of tweeted out that um, you know we should be playing in a low, low block, block and counterattacking, and he's not wrong because that's the best we've looked all year. But that's crazy with the team we have, right? The team we have should look awesome pressuring up the field. We have guys in the center midfield who can mark it up. We've got an all-action guy who can pressure the ball in Muyumba, right? And we have a front three. If you can turn it over and get him one-on-one, -on -one, they can take advantage of that all the time. Almada can beat his guy. Silva can beat his guy. Saba can beat his guy. Gigi can get behind. Like, that's awesome. So we need to be a pressure team in the middle here. And the way you're a pressure team is you get it sorted out in the back, right? And you, instead of playing this side-by-side -side so, Muyumba and Sleeves, you play forward back and, and free, I don't know, wear a t-shirt, free Muyumba. Yeah. <laughs> now, I wouldn't say that Muyumba was free during the Cincinnati game, but we did see a nice balance between uh sleaze and sleaze Moyamba. was, sleaze was sleaze doing was the more, more of that he yeah. was the more sleaze was more reading reading it figuring out how to step up and put the pressure Moyamba was just filling in the space but, but they were that, keeping it tight in that case sleaze had a lot more freedom like he sh like i want to have yeah. but then Muyamba was doing this crazy stuff he was like doing that 
yeah. to be out for an outlet. But I'm like, that's also not right. Like Muyama should be like, your job is like, go find ball, right? Mm -hmm. Go find ball, go <laughs> press your ball. Right. So, because what I would like for Muyama to do is to go pressure the ball, right. And try to win it. Right. And sleaze to be taking away their best option, which is, you know, this guy coming across, he takes away their best option. Right. And then if they try to, you know, play it or whatever, you know, let's say they play it back here, you know, Miyumba or whatever, your job is to recover on the weak side to these guys. Right. Um, yeah. And even if somehow they beat that, you know, sort of great pressure and the guy does amazing thing and he flips the ball through to here, one on one or whatever. Right. So once you do that, this guy has to run, right? You've got cop match up. He doesn't have this option over here and sleaze can recover in, right? Sleaze will do that. That's why he's so good, right? Right. If you don't have a guy like sleaze, then they beat that with one. He never gets back. And now you got to run against your backs. Right. But honestly, that's what you do. You take that chance and pressure. And even if you have that, let's say even sleaze, you know, trips over himself or whatever, and they run at you, whatever yeah. here, so you still got four back to try to cover 